welcome back. Let's play some more games, shall we? Uh, I just woke up. This should be fun. Um, yeah, we'll see whether or not... It's been a long time since I've gotten to play... Good luck. Uh, Central Falrook strategy. Let's see if I can force things this way. Alright, so I've already moved my king once. I don't need to move it a whole bunch of times here. Um, but no, let's, let's castle once more. Because we expect this. Um, oh wait, now in this opening I'm supposed to bring out the silver. Both to oppose that. As well as potential... Well, one is I could potentially move it here. Two is I could move it there. Um, moving it directly toward the center is more aggressive, even though it leaves, allows them to force an exchange on the third file. Um, I think this is playable if I remember correctly. Right, so they block their bishop, and we complete a castle. As this knight jumps out, my rook dives back. Um... Uh, can I push this pawn? No, if I push this, they bring the knight out. That doesn't do anything for me. Although... I wonder. Pawn up, knight out. Pawn up again. Oh, my rook is too close, but that's not cool, but... Um... I could manage to attack them. I don't get this. Pawn up, knight... Pawn, knight takes, bishop moves, threatening, well then they push this. But if I take the knight and silver takes, then I move this, threatening to move there. Uh, their rook just gets protected or evades my bishop's attack. Um, I thought there was something there, I just don't remember what. Okay, we're going to drop the rook back, just to dodge this knight. Um, but I don't recall what I should be doing here. Um, we make it slightly harder for this bishop to activate, I think. Yes, they do this. Granted, it's not so easy for my own bishop to activate, but still. Um, Nanafun. All right, I keep hearing that this gold move is something I should not do, because it makes it difficult to use my gold later in this game. But it seems so well positioned here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I can be taking space this way, too. Um... I don't know whether or not I should move my own knight, but yeah. We both take some more space. Let me check if my overlay is set right. 
So if I move the bishop... Yeah, I admit I'm extremely confused. Um. All right, so why did they wait until now to push this pawn? I don't understand. Is it something I did? Go home. Okay, that's... I don't understand that either. My position might be fragile, but it's not that fragile. I don't see a good place for them to drop a bishop after they take my bishop. If they don't take my bishop, I can push a pawn and, um, well, I don't know. Like, I want to use all of my pieces. So, how do we use all of my pieces here? Alright, that's a piece. We're using it now.
I want my bishop to be useful, or as useful as possible here. Sampun. Hmm. All right, I'm doing this even though after they capture, um, I suspect they'll just retreat here. So this is what I had planned. I don't think it's a good plan. Um, something doesn't feel right. But I couldn't find any other useful sequence of moves there. Ah, uh, this is what I missed. Very well. Um... I knew I was missing something, I just didn't, like, this sequence here where they can use their silver to break my position open, is what I missed. I knew what I was intending was too simple. I just couldn't, given the time situation, figure out what was going on. It helps to know what you're doing instead of making it up. I'm making it up. Um... Oh, I just gave him another free tempo. I didn't even see it that way, but yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to promote over here. Um... Let's use all of my pieces. Mm -hmm. So either they'll exchange bishops or uh, they'll block my bishop with a pawn. If they block, I promote my knight, I guess, because I don't see a way to advance my pieces further here. All right. Um, running is futile. Let's just get this over with. So they have a wealth of pieces to attack with. I don't. But if I attack effectively, maybe it's fine. Mm 
They might take my silver. Ippun. They might not. They might just allow me to attack freely. I didn't expect that. But okay. Um... Hmm. Oh, night takes was possible. Um, not necessarily best, but I didn't even evaluate. Oh gosh, that's mate in one. Well, that's disappointing. Thanks for the game. I thought I had a knight back here because I have a piece located on this square. All right, well played. So, basically, I exhausted my energy in the opening, and then uh, collapsed in time pressure. So, knowing what you're doing helps. The more you have to make up, the harder the game is. Good luck. Alright, let's try this. Hmm. Interesting. Why do I find everything so interesting? I don't know. But I suspect they're not moving their king over here, so I'm starting to push on this side already. Well, this is dubious timing. I should have moved my king or done one of dozens of other things here. So I could take this at this time. Hmm. Hmm. 
if they move their rook over and if I exchange, um, how does this play out? Does this gold retreat? Or do they actually, like, okay. I didn't think this looked playable at all, but sure. What's the catch? What makes this worthy of consideration? Alright, so there's potentially a fork on 5-5 five five if I just am not paying attention. I see that. Wouldn't surprise me if someday I fell into something like that. But my task right now isn't dealing with that, it's... Well, I mean, I could deal with it. Um... If I move the rook up, there's a fork here instead. Um, all right. So their rook is blocked, my rook is blocked. I was considering a second ago pawn 2 4. But that's not a bishop, that's a rook. So, pawn 2 4 would just help them attack me faster. I should do things that aren't counterproductive. Even better, I should aim to do productive things, but that would involve figuring out what's productive. Um. Alright, so my horse can't move forward there. We'll try to position it closer to our king, but also we're threatening this to take that next. But also we can take here and drop here again. Threatening this, they can defend and we could run away. Looks interesting. So this is a fork. Oh, I can't take that. Or maybe I can, but it's dangerous. Um, hmm. Man, I thought that was simple. It's not. At least I don't think it's simple anymore. So... I still have an attack against their king, but my rook is in an odd spot. And you could just say, just move the rook, and maybe that's the answer, but I don't think so. Bishop drops are really hard to predict. Look, there are 81 squares on this board, and many of them are decent candidates for a bishop drop. So, like, I'm having to stretch my position to deal with it. To deal with many threats that... any of which could just win a piece at some moment. So there's just so much to figure out. Um... That's it. I don't think this... Like, they don't prevail on the numbers here. So... Okay, yeah, they prevent my silver from directly attacking. Fine. Nanafun. Um...
So this whole time I've been wondering like what's about to transpire here. I saw that, I saw that, I saw that, I saw that. Um I saw this, I saw this. Bishop takes. I run over here. And I'm confused. If silver drops here, maybe I move the rook out at that point. I don't know. Um, maybe I can win their bishop directly here. Probably not. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that will be interesting. So once, if this retreats, trying to keep bearing, oh, well, okay. Sure. I mean, that's a legal move. Um, I don't think that's the most challenging legal move they have in that position. Not by a mile. So... Now they just get mated. I say just, but, like, this is going to be very difficult for them to defend. And I have many, many ways to attack here. So... I debated, like, trying to drop a gold or a bishop here earlier, and then tried to drop another here. I don't think it was quite enough for me. Um, I could have missed something. Gold drop. Um, the rook retreat. No. If they take... No. Go for no, what's going on? I'm just afraid their king is going to escape, and I'm going to exchange off my good bishop if it, Well, bishop's served its purpose. So if I drop my gold here, silver takes, pawn takes, and then pawn takes here next. But I don't have a gold to mate anymore. I could take the lance. <sighs> um, no, let's just play the easy move here. If they take my pawn, um, I can drop a gold and continue taking pieces. This is not an easy move. Um, but I thought having a silver to help the attack would be useful. Um, I thought a silver would be more useful than a lance.
Plus, once this rook takes, if I drop a silver here, if we exchange, and if they drop another silver there, I play bishop takes, or horse takes this, hitting the rook. Um, their king isn't in the clear, even if somehow they get three generals right next to it. But my bishop isn't a great attacking piece here. If we exchange silvers here, if they drop one here, if I take this, um, I don't have a good place to use it. But then my other bishop can participate in an attack here. But at some point they're just going to push this pawn and try to trap my bishop. At some point, they might also just drop a pawn on the head of my horse. Um, and that's not so easy. My horse is in a good spot right now, but it can't stay there forever. Oh, I have a silver drop here now, which threatens both mate and the rook. That seems like a useful thing. Let's just say that that was the reason two minutes ago I took the silver, was so I could drop it there and then threaten mate, but also threaten to win the rook. Thereby forcing them to escape their king or like move the rook right now at a time where moving the rook loses this. See, that would be a coherent plan of some sort. Not necessarily a good one, because taking a silver is still, like... I burned an entire two moves, dropping the bishop, retreating it, and then another two to reactivate it. Um, but, um, at least it's a plan. All right, our opponent's taking a minute to think. See, so yeah, we'll get through our games, and then um, afterward take a look at this idea. So, out of visual interest, what's up next? Speed is more important than material. And yet, like, I here I am taking a silver. So, yeah, it's interesting in the translation. It's not just about the literal endgame, but also the pre-endgame phase. So, this is a question of have we entered into the pre-endgame, that Yosa castle approach, um, castle breaking sort of phase. Um, I guess by taking the silver, I'm contending we're not quite there yet. We probably, I'd say we're probably in a late middle game. Um, Alright, looks like we know what's about to happen next. Oh! Okay. Well, that's cool. Thanks for the game. Yeah, I'm assuming something came up in real life. These things can happen. Let's finish our third game, and then uh, we can do some post-game analysis.
Thanks. Yeah. Good luck. Um, yeah, we've done this before. Let's see. Uh, let's bring the rook over. We'll take this vanguard pawn. And then don't forget to use this silver. Here it goes. Now they've already t claimed this space. The trade-off with pushing this up so early is that it becomes uh, capable of being exchanged. Okay... We have a four general castle. That's pretty cool. Alright, we're done castling now. Now it's time to attack. Cause, well, no, our opponent built this nice castle. Why shouldn't I build one? It's not like I can smash this thing. Um, so there's our first castle form. Our opponent is playing a strategy where they move all of their pawns, so that takes a bit of time to move all the pawns. Um, hmm. All right. There, what's wrong with this move? Let's find out. Rather than crossing over the Rook's line, we're going to move here directly. Wow. Okay. Um... Hmm. That's aggressive. Is this much aggression warranted? Or rather, what warrants it? So... That's a one-piece attack. If they had other pieces in hand, they'd be able to attack harder. Um... So let's remove the knight. Welcome. Hello. Our opponent has used all of their pieces except for this knight and this rook. They're playing without a rook. Okay, so I want to activate my bishop. Um, if I do that here, however, then that opens up this as a place for a bishop could drop. So maybe I'm not wild about that. Um, hmm. Do I? Well, no, if I let the lance go, bad things happen. Um, Nana Fumi. All right. So, what was next on their agenda? They're attacking without a rook. I'm attacking without my bishop. 
both of us are forgetting to use our pieces. It's entertainment. Um. Alright, that's a free pawn. But I'm also, like, prepping a place for me to drop a knight. And... Um... Also trying to find a way to get my bishop into this game. They block their bishop. Interesting choice. Wait a second. It's even more interesting than that. Um... Hmm, they have a pawn in hand, which is going to go right there. That's their plan. We just saw a saying early, a proverb today, drop a pawn, drop where your opponent wants to drop. And we see that dropping pawns is effective against a bishop. Um, but if I drop this, they just promote. Yeah, okay, what the heck. Let's do this. Hmm. Okay. Let's take that. Leave the rook blocked. So we've broken their castle right down the center. Um, Block this bishop. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have another pawn. I thought I had another pawn. That makes a big difference here. At least I think it does. Um... Hmm. Hey, my alarm clock's going off. So... I'm gonna make a move. I'll be right back. Alright. Yep. So they attack directly. That's a fork. Um. Hmm. All right, I'm going to do something crazy. Something. Let's get another proverb up here just for visual interest. Without pawns in hand, the game is lost. That's a good proverb for right now, isn't it? Hey, I've got a pawn in hand. Um... Yeah, my position is extremely loose. I was considering silver drop here next. 
Which doesn't do a lot. Now that I think more about it. Alright. Here goes nothing. They're probably gonna drop a knight. I move up and then who no oh, or this, sure. Um Yep, and then a silver drop, right? Mm-hmm. And it's this that I've been puzzling over. All right. Well, whatever. My bishop's not hanging yet. But yeah, this is what happens when I attack and all my pieces are hanging while I'm attacking. That said, the silver's not terrible. It's kind of sort of close to their king. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I'm going to continue this. Like, pawn drop trapping the rook and then a silver drop. Sure. Has some merit. Um, yeah, they're, at some point they're going to find this move, and I'm going to have to find a way to answer it. Probably rook drop, silver drop. Alright, they retreat, which is definitely a waste of time here. Um... Yeah, this retreat is a colossal waste of time. So, they could take this and... Oh, they don't. Alright, I attack freely. My opponent welcomes my attack. So, we'll, we'll enjoy this. Um... Maybe that's not the right sequence. I don't know for sure. Maybe I should have taken the gold general. I'm just slightly panicked in time pressure. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hang on. Let's actually maybe defend my king. Oh, they're threatening mate. I can't just ignore that. I mean, for one move, maybe I can, but gold over was smart. Unless I'm certain I have mate, and I'm not certain of that.
Maybe I should be certain. Mm, shit. Oh, that mates anyway. Thanks for the game. Well played. Hmm. Alright, that's three games for today. Um, it shows I need more practice uh, and more study. So, we'll get there. That was interesting. Um, yeah, we'll see over time. Compare this to months or year from now and see if I'm doing better, whether or not I'm on this site. Um, it's still good to have these tests to see where I'm currently at. I guess we could take a look at some of the recent games here. There is a website, Shogi Extend, that finds your recent game records. So, here we're able to copy a game record and then load it into uh, Shogi GUI. In fact, here Alexi has kindly take, copied a game record and has prepared something for us to study. So let me copy this link into my browser and we can take a look together. Um, now if I remember right, no, on this overlay I don't have anything blocking, so that's fine. Cool. So we had some very aggressive continuation here. Both of us played aggressively, which means that one of us is making a mistake. Yeah, this horse exchange for Rook was quite surprising. Oh, this is also good. Cool. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, it's similar positions. That is a nice tactic. Yeah, the objective, of, of course, is the king. And it's a question of, can we mate the king before it can escape? But yeah, the, every tempo we can get is valuable. Yeah, I didn't like this move, um, but there's a ton of reading that has to be done to figure out if there's anything better. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Right, so... Okay, this looks simple. Yeah, this certainly forces exchanges to occur. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Oh. This is a good point. Yeah, my king's safe. And, you know, I could take that silver whenever. I don't yet need it. Yeah, the challenge I'd set before myself is can I find a force checkmate? And no, I still have a very good approach to this castle, even if there's not an immediate forced mate. Uh, but there's going to be a mate soon. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, this looks very profitable and simple. I should have preferred this. Oh, wow. That's a cool move. Yeah, so that makes sense. Am I necessarily going to find these things in the future? Gosh, I hope so. Um, I might not find things like this all the time, but yeah, it's interesting that uh, just how hard it is to defend. Yeah, that builds quite an initiative there. Yes, yeah, so like each time that I attack, there's multiple ways I could consider attacking, and there's multiple ways they could consider trying to defend. So there's this uh, geometric number of positions or variations to look at, but it's still quite finite, and there's still ways to look at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not so sure about this one. Yeah, here. Right. Yeah, you still need to have some caution, not... Um, you have to balance your attack and defense. Um... I see. Yeah, it's not as if they're without recourse. I guess it'd be something different if, like, well, yeah. If the circumstance were very different, then taking a silver could be a useful move. Um... But here, taking it leaves my bishop hanging and doesn't do anything to continue my attack. Wow. Huh. In chess, like, it's so much easier when... We can see, okay, well, we have this concept of a fallback variation. And if everything goes... Uh, so you can select a variation and even sometimes play the starting move. Knowing that if everything goes wrong, just at the very least, hey, we can grab a rook or we can grab a queen in this line and therefore... Um, this variation isn't losing. Um, here it's, it's much more difficult to have the concept of a fallback variation. Um, because grabbing material is often a loss of time and a loss of the attack. So there's just more things that need to be considered before just grabbing a piece. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, in this case, the bishop's not the right attacking piece for that particular position. That's interesting. 
there's this trade-off of wanting to be able to use all of the pieces versus in some p positions certain pieces just aren't the right attacking piece and the further back you can anticipate all that you can change what position you get into based on which pieces you think you're going to get next yeah Cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's, see. let's try looking at the other comments and see if other comments make sense. So here we got to this position, and then we step forward. Rook 2-2. Two, two. White has some hedgy, heavy bludgeoning shape. I need to play against this quickly and lightly. Uh, the gold is in an aggressive but clumsy position. So, um, yeah, this is hard to resist unless I fight back. Um, I'm not sure whether I, what I did was right. So, yeah, gold takes this is what I thought was going to happen. And this avoids weaknesses associated with my uh, bishop drop or with the 6 5 bishop drop. Oh. Okay, the position here is similar um, you know, to the opposing rook, but Sakata style. Uh, but here the pawn is on 3 5. Can prevent a breakthrough if necessary later by moving up the gold. So there's nothing to panic about here or to worry about here. Yeah, so the mention that. Uh, this retreat deals with the 6-5 bishop drop. I didn't even see this. The 6-5 bishop drop is like, I mean, sure, this is fine. But it seems a lot clearer to drop here and take that. Um, but okay, this is fine too. Because they would like to castle this way, and I flustered every aspiration they have about castling. Um... This tries to get play on the diagonal here, um, but for right now, yeah, I've got one, two covering it, and they've got one attacking it. Um, there was a more active move here, so I was starting to think about this, and since White's King's still in the center, it'd be difficult for him to attack without some consequences for his king. You're going to be able to get play on the third file if he ever decides to exchange pawns. Uh, okay, yeah, you good point. There's no, like, the gold's not defending this. Their silver is not defending against a 3-4 pawn drop. So if ever they do this exchange, uh, yeah, I actually do get play here. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so they defend against this drop, um, threatening this drop next. So do this drop anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, neither of us have built any castle yet, but their king is still in the center, mine is not. So I'm slightly safer here. Um, so this is one variation with gold 4-4. Four, four. They alternately uh, might not move the gold back to 4-4. Four, four. Um, okay, so they don't have a pawn drop here because they still have a pawn up there. And this gold prevents them from dropping a pawn on the knight's head. Therefore, this tactic is cool. That's nice. So at the same level as this pawn exchange, they might consider this instead. Um, okay, so similar to the game, I can attack like that. Oh, holy moly. 
That's sharp. But yeah, their king is in the center still, so what have I got to fear? Um, I don't know that my king is much safer, but it is safer. Um, alternately, in this variation, we could have this move. Um, gold 3-6 instead of the same level here. Or so if they start the attack with this pawn, we get the mutual rook exchange, potentially. If they lead with the gold instead... So again, I don't exchange bishops here to lessen the pressure. I'm okay with this pressure then. Um, and so, yeah, they would not allow this because this promoted pawn is enormous, because if they take it, there's a rook drop winning material and continuing the attack. So they'd be having to dodge this promoted pawn as it would just walk right in on their castle. So they avoid the rook exchange here. And so here they have an active rook, they have an active bishop, an active gold. Uh, they don't have a castle. And I've got a promoted pawn. And somehow this is good. Um, yeah, this is an active possibility. My king is way safer. His king is closer to attacking areas. Okay. That's an interesting way to think about it. So, even though I've moved up my knight, my knight does cover the head up here. My knight and pawn cover some space. My horse covers a lot, covering the head of this. My gold covers here. So yeah, it's going to take them significant time to walk in and hit my king. So sure, they've got multiple pieces they can attack with, but it's going to take time for them to do that. Uh, meanwhile, I have a, a knight, a horse, and a pawn attacking, and potentially a gold to join the force. So, uh, yeah. Um, I guess the rook here actually covers the head of the castle, too. Huh. Yeah, so if I carelessly exchange pieces, then they gain time, and then this is not so clear. But here, yeah, I have way more space covered very heavily. And they don't have a castle. And while it's not clear exactly where I'm piercing this, um, on account of there being multiple weaknesses, and any one of them could be where I break in, um, even though I don't have four pieces attacking, it's still quite good. Interesting. Yeah, so, an alternate to this knight a drop move would just be activate the rook simply, which may or may not be so simple, but yeah, that's a possibility. It all comes down to, can I mate this king? Or does this rook move give them a free move to do something, trying to break this open? I don't even know how necessarily they would, but my rook is floating at this point. But, like, if I could sack my rook to get a mate, then it's all good. Shogi's complex. Um, so here, oh, let me go one move at a time. So I retreat my bishop in exchange here. Um, another possibility is just... Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, I don't need to... Hmm. Yeah, this is possible. Um, yeah, the option of taking... If they ever take this, eventually I'm going to get a pawn drop there anyway. So, yeah, this I have good pressure. Even though I'm feeling pressured here, this is fine. 
Oh, even taking a 3-6 later. Uh... Oh, this protects my rook. It does. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I was so fixated on this 3-7 square that, like, okay, yeah, the this gold isn't defended by anything other than the rook, but the rook and gold defend each other in this specific circumstance. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, I would probably delay this until after... I get some situation where I know it's not going to be such a weakness to do that. Um, the weakness of moving this up is that it gives away some space toward this middle, and it itself is hanging. It could be a target for a pawn, bishop, knight, or a other piece. So, um, yeah, I'd be a little cautious about doing this so early. But it's an idea in other similar positions uh, where I might need to do that, I can do it. Here I exchanged bishops. Uh, this is a loss of time on my part, but um, I thought I was certain they were going to drop a bishop against this. Uh, instead, like, now I have this nice, easy line right against their king. Then they try to push, uh, try to force this attack, and so yeah, I threatened to hit the bishop directly. They have to push this at this point. Um, yeah, we exchange some pieces. Yeah, so... Like, this is not my smartest sequence of moves ever. Um, yeah, just many, many things were... There was a lot that had to be read, and I was not in the mood for reading unfortunately, so, um, yeah, that just didn't go well. I mean, arguably, the silver is way off sides, so... If I have tremendous confidence in my attack, I would bring my rook out and try to mate them right now. Um, I don't think I have that level of confidence here. I could consider this pawn 3-4 attack trying to split the castle. Um, again, I think that's a bit complicated. But having delved into this line... Um, yeah, like... I encouraged my opponent to do all this. And I just could not evaluate this at all. I mean, yeah, I have a castle, they don't. But I tend to believe in the opponent's ability to defend against anything. Um, this looks good for me. So I wonder, how good is this? Is this good? Um, I don't know. I don't know, like, at a glance, how to evaluate this sort of stuff. So possibilities are taking the rook and taking the horse. Okay, yeah, taking the horse looks really nice. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this attack doesn't stop. It's nice to have this consecutive attack. Right. Well, since I've taken the horse, I have a bishop I can use. Um... But yeah, there's a lot of attacking possibilities here. Oh, that's nice. Wow, that is a beautiful pawn drop. I mean, sure, okay, yeah. That's the night drop could happen too. 
Okay. Yeah. I tend to be really pessimistic about my own attacking chances. Perhaps because I've seen kings slip out of these, slip out of my attacks many times. Um, but there comes a point where it's counterproductive for me to be pessimistic about everything. Yeah, that's an amazing night drop. That seals uh, the king's escape. You tend to see that much closer to uh, the king being made it closer to the edge of the board, but it's awesome to see that in the center. Yeah. And so here the opponent has two pawns and five pieces in hand, um, none of which can help them. And meanwhile, I have a castle where none of my pieces defend each other, but at least I have a castle. Um, it's, yeah, this is really nice. Oh yeah. So, yeah, if push came to shove, I could also like drop a pawn or something else to stop uh, the rook's influence. Yeah, that attack is very strong. Okay. Yeah, here taking the rook, it's, uh, it's still good, but that other line was super interesting. This is still interesting. Yeah, so they would defend. And here I would think I'd have to back off? No? Oh, right. So... Wait, this does... Hmm. So they have one... Yeah, nothing's defending this gold other than the king, so we can forcibly remove it. Nice. Yeah. We still need to defend accurately here. Uh, they only have one piece attacking, but men others can join it if I'm careless. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. I mean, here, yeah, that's the correct way to defend. It keeps away the other attacking pieces. And, yeah, then their attack has completely stopped here. Yeah, so in this line where we take the rook instead of pursuing the king, um, this requires deep reading. Yeah, whereas yeah, instead of taking this rook, taking uh, the silver, which was much uh, safer, or yeah. Yeah, also taking the horse might be possible. But then here they get some initiative, but yeah. Yeah. That other variation was tricky. This one's less tricky. Oh, right. We still have this uh, promoted pawn, Ms. Tokian, that can chase the king, too. 
That's really nice. So even though the check is two moves slower, but yeah, it's still there. Hmm. Well, if I could surround the king, the opposing king, I would. Oh, okay. That's interesting. How's that work? Yeah. Oh yeah, and here I've got lots of pieces to attack with, too. And they don't have so much to defend with. Very nice. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, yes, I think we've looked at uh, the variations you had suggested here. Um, yeah, and it was awesome looking at all these things together. Um, So, yeah, I guess uh, one area I need to understand better isn't necessarily um, the endgame phase, but the phase right before it. And I think a book's being written about this. Um, I don't know when such a thing could be available, but um, yeah, I'm getting an appreciation for my king is much safer because I've lots of pieces defending it and this king is still prone because look at this attacker look at this attacker this is something an intuition well you have to be reading you can't just intuit the whole thing but um yeah this is something that takes experience to be able to find what are the candidate moves to look at how to evaluate a position what sort of based on an evaluation, how should you be looking for the candidates, etc. There's a lot to this. Um, but yeah, when you start finding the right moves and are evaluating properly, it becomes possible to go uh, look at things really deeply and profoundly understand them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the better I understand things, um, then the better I can play attacks and not have not resort to stuff like this, where I just am like, well, I have no idea what's going on, so I'm just going to go retreat, remove my opponent's attacking force, and assume that like I can play the rest of this out. Um, yeah, so it's valuable to understand what your options are, so in, under time pressure, you can... Uh, pick the right option. Um, yeah, one other thing I guess I hadn't looked at here. So gold 3-3 looks simple here. It wouldn't surprise me if there are other simple moves too. Like, this is probably simple. Even though it encourages the king to run into the corner. Um, even this is probably fine. It's This isn't normally how you'd want to attack. Um, even something like this might still work here. Or if the king runs, um, like, we still... It's... the lines you showed were clearly much clearer than this. But, uh, this is yet another thing. And, um, like, I still think this is not a good move. But this is, uh, probably still better than what I did in the game. Um... Yeah, this looks okay. So, yeah, it helps to just have some awareness of what uh, the possibilities are. Figure out how safe your king is, figure out how safe their king is. Uh, it's not just about the material, but initiative matters quite a lot, too. So, like, way earlier here... Um, 
here I exchanged bishops um, to try to reduce pressure here. And this uh, resulted in a loss of time for me. Um, so, like, if I'd been aware of these other defensive ideas, um, I wouldn't have forced myself into that. That said, like, the bishop exchange is fine, but, like, if I'm constantly picking fine moves, how am I going to win? It's not going to be easy. Uh, so, yeah, there's just so much to be aware of. It's such a rich and complex game, and there's so much we can learn about it. Um, so I have to get ready for work. I hope we enjoyed this all together. Thank you very much, Alexi, for uh, really helping me understand this game. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a good day.